Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. This time we've got part two of a video where we're going to look at the process of digital to analog conversion. In the previous video, which I'd encourage you to have a look at because it's meant to be viewed in conjunction with this one, uh, we used uh, just some discrete components to, to produce the conversion. This time we're going to use a chip which is specially made for that purpose, the DAC0808. So let's start with a quick recap of the way these converters usually work and then see what it is that we're going to be working with here in this video. OK, let's just uh, quickly recap what we covered in part one, uh, where we made use of two types of circuit to convert digital to analog. The first type being the uh, ladder of resistors, as I like to call it, where the resistors uh, double in value as you go up the, the data lines. And the other type was the um, R2R version, uh, which again, uh, the, that tends to hopefully null out some of the um, uh, errors in, in resistor value. So we saw both of those in the first video. Again, and both of these circuits feeding an op amp, which converts the tiny current into uh, to a voltage that we can make use of. So this time then we're going to use a custom chip, it's the DAC0808. Uh, that's a 16 pin uh, package um, and it isn't uh, configured in the same way that you might expect uh, some uh, digital chips to be configured. So don't be applying supply voltage to pin 16 and, uh, and ground to pin 8 because it ain't going to work. Um, it's a little bit different. Um, what's inside that chip? Um, maybe at the first glance looks a little bit um, complex. Uh, it's actually relatively straightforward. You've simply got one piece of circuit replicated eight times. And um, if we look in this area here, you can hopefully see that there's the R2R ladder arrangement. So this is essentially a, a single uh, package which contains the um, R2 R R2 uh, ladder. You may recall um, the circuit arrangement from uh, from the previous video, and the rest of the chip is essentially about um, conditioning the signal and also setting up voltage references that we're not going to concern ourselves with today. Uh, that's what's in the package. Now the data sheet's very uh, comprehensive and definitely worth a look at. Uh, so, if a practical application, we can simply make use of the circuit that we find in the data sheet. So we've got digital inputs coming in on the left and then various bits of circuitry um, which eventually feed out to an op amp uh, and that op amp is uh, what's producing the, uh, the the output voltage. So what I'm going to do today um, almost mimics that. Uh, the 5k resistors on there I'm going to use 4.7k and I'm going to supply 5 volts instead of 10. I appreciate that's going to uh, change a little bit the um, maybe the output uh, shape of the output waveform, but uh, I've only got two power supplies, so I'm wanting to use plus five to drive the chip, and I'm going to produce a uh, minus 15 volts for the for the um, VEE reference at the bottom there, uh, and I'm also going to make use of a TL072 op amp because that's what I've got. Um, those changes aren't actually. Um, uh, that's significant really. So how's all that look on the breadboard? Um, well, hopefully it looks quite um, quite tidy. So you can see the, the main uh, chip there uh, on the left hand side uh, and we've got the two uh, 4K7 resistors uh, at the top there which you, um, again you can see on pins 14 and 15. Uh, the 100 nanovan farad capacitor is uh, the, the blue package. Uh, bottom left, the white wire coming in is the minus 15 volt supply and then the other other connections for plus 5 and ground are taken from the other rails. And the um, sharp eyed amongst you are going to spot that um, I'm not using the 4K7 resistor in this photo for the um, feedback on the op amp, I'm using uh, 3K3. Um, again, that's um, a small change that doesn't make a great deal of difference. The bit that matters though, that purple wire that runs on the bottom right hand side is the, the output from the uh, the output of the op amp and we're just using half of the op amp on this circuit. So uh, I've omitted here the eight uh, 
the input lines simply to give you a, a nice clear layout uh, on the breadboard. So let's now go and have a look at that on the bench. Okay, so here's the uh, DAC 0808 then just there uh, and it's attendant um, op amp here and that's arranged exactly as you've uh, seen just now um, in the, the photograph for next to the circuit diagram. Uh, the thing I'd omitted was these eight data lines simply because it makes it difficult to see the, um, the basic layout of the circuit. So what I've got at the moment is I've got eight data lines coming in and hopefully you can see this if I hold those wires out of the way, it's maybe not dead obvious. This is a, an 8 pin dip switch and here that little uh, black or dark coloured bar there is a 2.2k inline resistor pack and that's connected to um, to the uh, to ground there and that's pulling all those data lines low um, by default so uh, currently with all the dip switches off we've got we've definitely got all zeros I've not didn't want to leave them floating thought that's quite important now this uh, dip switch rather frustratingly is very fond I don't know if you can see that. It's very fond of jumping out of my breadboard. So just for the purposes of a quick demo, I'm going to adopt a hold it in with my finger approach. Um, now what I'm going to do is currently the Kiwit uh, is telling me that I've uh, got about 57 millivolts coming out of the op amp. This is the going to the multimeter here. Um, so I'm going to press and hold relative. So now it's measuring the relative uh, voltage and it's ignoring that um, voltage that was uh, coming out of there when the converter was set to uh, to all zeros. So if I now switch on the least significant bit, like so, we've taken that uh, line high. See, so we've gone up to about 131 millivolts there. And if we go somewhere part way along, just going to along to bit to bit four here, turn that on, and we've gone up to 800 and something millivolts. Um, if we go along a bit further still, we're getting 3.27 uh, and last but one we're getting 4.2 and if I go to this one here which is the most significant byte uh, we've got 4.19 and uh, hopefully it's making sense here that whatever arrangement of I put those dip switches in will give me um, a voltage um, and that there'll be 255 potential voltage steps here because this is a an 8-bit um, data bus if you like that's feeding in uh, potentially numbers between 0 which is currently set to and um, if I was to switch them all on it would be uh, 255 or FF in hex if you um, prefer that. So that's the um, DAC 80808 uh, doing his job um, and you can hopefully see the data coming across um, but let's um, let's try and do something a little bit more interesting because um, uh, this chip um, obviously is capable of uh, responding quickly to um, changes in the data line a little bit quicker than I can switch on and off the dip switches so let's see if we can turn um, uh, digital to analog uh, into action if you like and let's see if we can uh, make it work as a, as a proper circuit. So I'll just get set up for that and then um, let's see what we can do. Okay let's see if we can join everything together here and um, show you analog to digital and then back to analog again. Um, so what have we got? Well we've got our um, digital to analog chip here that you've previously seen set up with its attendant uh, op amp and now what I've done I've got these eight jumper wires bringing across the eight bits of a digital signal and they're being produced by the analog to digital converter chip which you've um, seen in a previous video I'll link that up top so you can so you can see it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed in uh, um, sine wave here from my signal generator. We'll convert that into digital, we'll pass that digital information across these jumpers 
and see if we can get some kind of semblance of uh, analog output that looks similar. Now let's get the disclaimers in. First of all you may recall when I talked through the circuit of the uh, digital to analog chip I did say I'm not using uh, the exact arrangement for voltages that the uh, recommended setup um, suggests. I don't really have the facilities to do it so I've simply got a 5 volt supply running the chip and I've managed to get a minus 15 volt for one of the references so I'm not expecting by any stretch of the imagination to get a perfect um, output but it would be nice to hopefully uh, see if the, the chip does indeed um, track uh, what the um, input signal is. So second thing to say and I suppose this is a disclaimer too uh, this is a lash up let's not pretend none of these jumpers here have got any kind of decoupling they probably should all have a capacitor on them to ground to take away the noise and there's probably plenty of other places I could do that as well so um, I haven't done it I just want to see if I can join it all together and make it work um, which hopefully I can so I've got yellow trace on the scope attached to the input and because of the nature of the circuitry here that will pull the signal a little bit from an, from an exact sine wave but it's um, not too concerned about that and then on the output here I've got the uh, channel 2 of the scope which is a purple trace attached here so I'm going to now switch on uh, the supply and uh, press the um, start button which triggers the analog to digital conversion and that should result in LEDs lighting up which it does um, and then I'm going to in a moment switch on uh, the incoming signal and then we'll see what we get so to do that I'm going to move the camera over to the scope since uh, you won't actually see anything on here other than what you're seeing now when, it, when it's working but we'll see what uh, kind of results we get okay so we've got um, yellow trace channel 1 switched on at the moment and it's just running along zero there I, I need to supply the uh, analog to digital chip with um, a positive going voltage so the sine wave I'm going to use I'll now switch that on here uh, is going from zero up to about well it's, yeah, it's about 4.7 volts and then back down to zero again so because if I supply it with a negative voltage it just simply won't understand that so we've got that waveform being fed into the digital to an, sorry the analog to digital converter I always get that mixed up and on the channel 2 which is the purple trace we've got the output from the uh, converter that we've just looked at so let's switch that on and hopefully we're going to get something that looks sensible and there we go yes quite pleased with that hmm, nice uh, appreciate that's not an exact waveform but you heard all the disclaimers just now it's lashed up on a breadboard I haven't got the power supply requirements exactly right I don't have enough power supplies to do that um, but we can see we've definitely got uh, conversion going on and then uh, returning back so that's one kilohertz if we go up to two kilohertz you can hopefully see it's um, it's tracking that if I uh, just alter the time base a little so it's starting to struggle when I get up to 4 kilohertz. not surprising really with the um, state of the wiring on this uh, on this board so let's go back to 1 kilohertz. and what you can hopefully see and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the display for a moment so you can actually see it a little better uh, if you look carefully the yellow trace um, is lagging slightly behind the purple trace in actual fact uh, you've got the so what you've got here is the time that it takes the analog to digital chip to actually run through its algorithm and convert the data into digital remembering that the digital to analog chip uh, is actually quite fast because essentially that's an analog process really it takes digital information but very quickly uses analog electronics to produce the the output so that delay is most definitely caused by um, the conversion and that's a common thing when you convert uh, analog to digital and then convert it back again uh, here in the UK we have a, a time signal on the radio and if you uh, listen to the, the time signal pips um, as people tend to call them here if you listen to that time signal on a conventional FM radio 
and then set up a, a DAB radio next to it, which of course is digital. Uh, the tip, the chips, but the pips, sorry, not the chips, the pips are um, slightly out of sync, and that's the um, conversion process uh, going on with the uh, digital signal. So, um, rather nicely, um, we appear to have um, a working uh, system there. Uh, just last up on the breadboard but at least it does hopefully show that um, all the stuff we've been looking at uh, does actually work after a fashion okay well that's uh, it for part two of the digital to analog conversion um, series of videos and we've managed to tie it up with yet another video where we looked at um, analog to digital conversion and although my setup on the breadboard was crude and you could make lots of improvements it hopefully did nonetheless show that uh, conversion to digital and then back from digital um, is possible using these chips and if you tidied the circuit up and um, maybe used slightly better quality breadboard than I've got you'd probably end up with better results um, but it's encouraged me to be a little bit more ambitious with things on the breadboard because this is probably the most complicated circuits I've ever built. So I hope you've found that interesting and useful. Um, thanks very much for watching. Um, if you've liked it please click the thumbs up. Also consider subscribing and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.